Hi, my name is Alan Prost and this is part two of doing pulmonary function testing. And in this test, we're going to have the patient do a forced vital capacity. All right? So this test is a little bit different than our previous slow vital capacity in that we need you to blow out hard and as fast as you possibly can and blow it out really, really hard. And I'm going to help you coach with that. Like all our pulmonary function tests, you're going to be wearing your nasal clip here to make sure all the air goes through your mouth and out in between and through the machine. All right? I'm going to need you to put your teeth on the outside of this and get a good proper seal. All right? And then I'm going to coach you to just have nice, even breathing. All right? And then when you're ready, you're going to take a little breath in, blow it out, and then I'll say, big breath in, and I want you to take a big breath in as much as you possibly can, big, big breath in, and then blast it out as hard and as fast as you possibly can, and keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing, and I'm going to get you to keep blowing for a full six seconds at least, all right? Now, that's going to seem like a long time, all right? But I'm going to tell you how long, and I'll give you a little countdown as we're doing the test, so... I'll give you a keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. And then once you've blown all the air out you possibly can, even if you've got nothing left, I want you to try to keep blowing it out and just don't take any air in until I say, big breath in again. And then I want you to fill your lungs all the way in again. All right? Right to the maximum, as hard and as fast as you possibly can. And then you can relax. The test will be over. All right? So nice, even breathing. Okay? Big breath in as much as you possibly can, and then blast it out hard and fast, hard and fast. Keep blowing, keep blowing for a full six seconds. Keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. It's going to seem like a really long time. And then big breath in as much as you can again, and then relax breathing. All right? So we're going to do strong, vigorous coaching with you to help you get as good results as possible from this test. All right? So I'll show you what that looks like on the computer. That's a forced vital now let's coach this on a real patient. So nice, easy breathing for the first few breaths here, just to get them used to it. So a nice, gentle inspiration, exhalation. Now big breath in, big, 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 big as we can, big, 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 hold it and blast it out, blast it out, blast it out. Keep blasting, keep blasting, keep blowing, keep blowing, keep blowing. Don't stop now, don't stop now, and don't stop now, and big breath in. And we're all done. Now that we're finished the test, let's look at it on the computer. Just so we can get oriented to the force vital capacity loop, here's the inspiratory section of the loop. We take that big breath in, and here's the expiratory part. Here you can see it in the uh, being outlined right there. So that's really important. It's the expiratory part. It should be forced and vigorous, and we should see that very clearly with our patients. Now it's really important when we look at that expiratory loop to make sure there's no coughs or sputtering, and the patient has a good forced, vigorous exhalation at that time. Another detail we should be looking for is uh, highlighted here with that red arrow, where we should be looking at that start of test. This is the extrapolated volume, and make sure that the patient has a good, vigorous starting of the test, and that they haven't leaked out a little bit of volume before they started blasting the air out. That's important for our FEV1 and other calculations on the pulmonary function test. Now, when we review our data, we're going to make sure we get three good tests. Make sure the patient didn't have any coughs or glottic closures during the test, that we held the test for a complete six seconds, so there's good um, end of test criteria. They didn't take a little breath in at the end or anything like that. Then we look at the FVC and the FAV1 to make sure that those are fairly consistent. And to do this, we need to look at the highest one. That's the one we're going to be reporting, the largest FEC and the largest FEV1. And we're going to make sure that two of these good tests are within 150 mils of each other, or 5% of the forced vital capacity. So that meets our ATS criteria, to, and we'll rep be reporting the largest FEC and FEV1 test. Thank you very much. That's reviewing the forced vital capacity.